Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, today we will actually starting discussion of macroeconomic uh, subject matters. Okay. So, we told that uh, very beginning if you can remember uh, almost first or second lecture we have uh, clubbed or classified the entire economics discussion into two broader heads. One is called macroeconomics, another is called microeconomics. right? And when we are class, we were classifying that if you can remember macroeconomics is the uh, subject matter uh, of those things, those economic uh, economics discussion where we will concentrate or com, uh, confine ourselves uh, to the in operation of or uh, operating of the entire economy wide phenomenon like overall income level of a country of an entire economy right or say inflation. Uh, in that economy or say unemployment, employment scenario right all those things. So, economy as a whole economy wide phenomenon or phenomena different aspects we will discuss in this course or in this macroeconomics portion. In fact, the content of this course if you look at uh, majorly involved microeconomic concepts and few macroeconomics concepts we are discussing and any macroeconomics okay, in, in undergraduate level or even postgraduate level macroeconomics will start with the discussion of how to calculate or how to compute income level of, a, in, of an entire economy. Okay. In your book, the book we are following if you can remember one combined volume we mentioned in that combined volume I think the uh, chapter 23 or 22, 22 or 23 we are covering computing a uh, nation's income okay, or, or calculating a nation's income like that national income accounting there is a chapter. Okay. So, we are discussing that chapter today. Okay. So, by national income or income of say when income of a family uh, where I am the head. Okay. So, this family's income uh, if we want to calculate what we have. So, how much uh, by selling my resource whatever is there may be labor force, labor power or whatever I am selling in the labor market and from that whatever I am getting as income that is my family's income. right? Suppose, my family two members are uh, doing a job or uh, engaged into job. right? So, whatever I am earning and another member whatever he or she is earning. So, if I add those two earnings that will be my family's income and so on depending on how many earning members are there in each family. So, exactly that way uh, for a country for an entire economy right whatever the income level how to compute. So, definitely or how to how to add them. So, definitely whatever products productive resources okay, is there in that economy right. So, the contribution of each of those productive resources into some production activity whatever they are producing if we if we if we combine them if we accumulate them in value terms monetary units right that will be the entire country's national income look when i am referring my family's income so the income from from the productive resources whatever my family own by selling those productive resources whatever we are gaining that is my family's income right. Like I am one, one member of that family I have resource that some labor hours per day may be 8 hours of labor okay. that I am selling in the labor market and I am gaining some income. Similarly, perhaps my family has some piece of land okay. that land I am renting out to another producer who is say may be cultivating in my land. Right. So, that producer is paying some rent to me okay, or to my family. So, that is also a part of my income. So, basically the rent what I am gaining or the wage what I am gaining through selling my labor force in the labor market some of these the, if these are the only two source of income of my family. So, whatever the, through these two alternative sources whatever income we are generating if I add them that will be my family's income. So, look 
these incomes we are generating or we are gaining through selling of some productive resources whatever my family owns some labor power or labor labor hour and some piece of land which we are hire, we are we are renting out okay so that way income of a country or of an entire economy of an entire nation should be the income generated through uh, productive resources or factors of production whatever is there within that country those factors of productions by employing or by employing those factors of production whatever total goods and services or total production we are generating within the entire economy those productions market valuation will be the nation's income okay so in that context there is very important important terminology called gross domestic product so entire countries uh, whatever uh, national income is okay that is denoted by one terminology one associated terminology is called gdp gross domestic product gross domestic product okay in short it is called gdp okay so what is the definition of the gdp definition of the gdp that an economy whatever goods and services it is producing or finally producing okay its market value within a particular time point sometimes this type point usually in you know, one year but uh, sometimes you will see that quarter one year can be classified into four quarters right in india one financial year is basically march 1 of a year say say suppose uh, 2020 to no not march 1 i am sorry it is april 1 April 1 say 2022 March 31st March 31 2021 this time period this one year is referred as financial year 2020 21 okay so this uh, 12 months or this entire year comprise of four quarter April 1 April May June April 1 to June 30 that is the quarter first quarter okay of that financial year and similarly every 3 months we will tell another quarter another quarter so in that way fourth quarter of this financial year is uh, January 1 to 31st March okay of 2021 okay similarly if we have a calendar year say maybe January 1 to 31st December of a particular year okay that can be referred as a calendar year and january 1 to 31st march will be the first quarter in that way four quarters will be there so this quarter or year or month when we are bringing so when we are talking about gdp it is basically what market value of all the finally produced goods and services or final production of all the goods and services produced within an economy okay for a top or in a particular time point or time period okay that time period sometimes may be one year sometimes may be one quarter sometimes may be one month even so if it is one month so we will tell that that particular month gdp of a country or of an economy or that particular year uh, gdp of an economy or that particular quarter say maybe quarter third quarter of 2020 uh, 21 that financial year like that right now the way we are defining gdp every word has an importance first first is the market value market value okay so whatever is produced okay and each of these uh, terminology when i am classifying or clarifying i am clarifying also since this market value is in, involved here which are not a part of gdp although those are also part of our production okay that will also will give so first the market value market value means what say in a country say suppose in our country how to calculate that gdp how to calculate nominal gdp vis a vis real gdp all those concepts i am coming one by one okay so market value means say suppose in a country say uh, say suppose one quintal of apple one 
a particular year, this financial year in India, suppose 1000 quintal of apple has been produced, right. So, in that particular financial year, some overall price level of apple is there in the market, say perhaps say 150 rupee per kg, per, suppose. So, 150 rupee per kg into whatever amount of kg of apple within that particular financial year India produced, that total market valuation we will, we will lead uh, we will land the total market valuation because 150 rupee per kg into that much kg. Okay. So, total amount of market value of apple we will aggregate or we will calculate we will get some uh, monetary value. So, that is the part of Indian GDP only from apple. Similarly, so many others goods and services are produced within an economy. right? So, whatever is the final production of those products, so th those will be the part. So, in this way all the productions, all the goods and services whatever are produced within a particular financial year within that uh, in that uh, economy that will be a part of uh, that uh, country's or that economy's GDP for that financial year, okay? the same way. So, we have to consider market value. Now, suppose say in, in certain rural uh, rural households you will see that or may, many households even uh, urban areas also these days say you have one kitchen garden, okay? maybe uh, in backyard of your home or these days sometimes people make uh, people grow certain vegetables in their uh, terrace garden as well. right? So, whatever vegetables small small vegetables you are gro growing there, right? so those vegetables you are actually you are utilizing them for cooking food at your home, right. So, those are although part of our national production, okay, means it is also some uh, we are using some resources productive resources to grow those vegetables in our own kitchen garden, right. Okay. Although it is produced within this economy, but it is not a part of GDP of that economy because these products are not coming through any market transaction. So, that is the that is the importance of market value market. Okay. So, those goods and services which are transacted through market mechanism, those only are captured within the GDP calculation. Okay. So, the production what is happening within an economy, but which is not a part of or which is not coming through any market transaction, those are not part in a GDP. So, you can see that in this way, you know, all the market valuation of all the process, suppose in India one particular year, say only apple and orange are produced and whatever total amount of apple and whatever orange total amount of orange which are produced, all of them are transacted through market. And through that market transaction, suppose total market valuation in that particular year of these two products which are only the two, produ two products which are produced within that country is uh, suppose uh, rupees 3000 crore suppose. Okay. So, you can you can immediately understand that perhaps uh, actual GDP of India is little bit more than this because this rupees 3000 crore is underestimation. Why underestimation? Because beyond this apple and orange which are transacted in the market, there may be lot of other commodities, some other farmers are there who is producing apple, another farmer is there who is producing also orange, but they are producing that for their family consumption only, they are not selling that in the market. Since those apple and orange which are produced within the country, but those are not transacted through market mechanism, right? Although those are also production of this country, those are not a part of the GDP of that country for that particular year. Okay. So, you can understand this rupees 3000 crore when we are telling that that is our GDP, this must be an underestimation, right? So, underestimation when I am telling, you can easily understand in which sense those are underestimation. So, very important concepts when we are defining GDP, first is the market value, the production of those goods and services which are calculated or whose valuations are calculated or evaluated at the existing market prices. So, they has to go through or they have to go through the market transaction mechanism first, okay? that is the market value. Now, goods and services, so what is goods and services we know, right? those are which are produced 
certain income which are not part of GDP, although uh, that may be some income of an individual. Say suppose uh, uh, in the street where your home is located, in that street there is a temple, right? Or maybe there is a mosque or there may, may be a church, something, some religious place is there. U usually people gather there for really religion related prayer and all, right? So, you will realize that and some this kinds of religious place before that say some beggar is sitting, okay? he or she is begging from the people who are visiting that place. right? So, that beggar suppose a beggar is earning say rupees say 300 in a day. So, definitely that is the earning of that beggar, but that is not a part of GDP of that country. Why? Because that earning whatever that beggar is gaining that is basically some transfer payment, transfer payment in which sense perhaps I am giving 10 rupee or I gave 10 rupee to that, that beggar, right. This 10 rupee is a part of my income, when I sell my labor force or labor uh, amount in the labor market and I earn say 1000 rupees, that time that, that 1000 rupees is already counted to be a part of my our GDP that is my contribution in our GDP, in India's GDP. Since that 1000 rupees already counted somewhere, I am giving simply 10 rupee of that 1000 rupee to that, part, that particular person. So, we should not count that 1010 rupee as if as GDP. No, because if you carefully observe that 1010 rupees is not generated by me, 1000 rupee only generated by me, from that I am giving 10 rupees some, to some person. Now, the question is how we can understand that this beggar's income should be a part of GDP or not. Look, beggar is earning that, that amount that 300 rupee per day or whatever it is without any production activity that is not coming through any production activity. He is simply begging uh, give something, give something uh, to ask uh, people and people are giving whoever uh, wish to give what someone is 1 rupee, someone 10 rupee whatever it is. Okay. So, since he, it is his income, a personal income, an individual income, but it is not a part of GDP because that income whatever he is gaining that is already counted as a part of GDP of some by, by contribution of somebody else that is why. Okay. Exactly that way as a student perhaps you are getting say rupees 1000 per month as pocket money from your parents that is not also a part of GDP that 1000 rupees. Because when your parents income say maybe uh, monthly your parents are earning say 50,000 rupees from where he or she is giving or they are giving 1000 rupees to you per month okay, as pocket money, this 1000 rupees is coming from that 50,000 rupees. And when we calculate India's GDP that 50,000 rupees already incorporated or already included in GDPs. So, the pocket money what you are gaining or you are you are getting from your parents that is not a part of separate GDP okay? that should not be calculated or should not be summed. You are getting some pocket money, your friend is getting some, so many students are there in a country right, all of them are getting some pocket money. Those should not, we should not count each of them okay, to get another portion of the GDP, no, because those are all these income, beggars income, your pocket money all are called transfer payment, transfer payment. These are not a part of GDP or we should not count them to calculate while we are calculating GDP because those are already counted okay? and these are simply transfer of money from one person to another in that way without any production activities involved in the background. Okay, when your parents are earning some money, they are involved in some production activity. Perhaps they are they are selling their services to some office, or perhaps they are they are selling their labor force to labor market, or maybe uh, they, they are doing uh, or they, they have some uh, different product or some uh, productive resource which they are hiring or they are uh, lend, uh, uh, renting out like that. So through some through some they are, they are the resource they own that they are engaging into some production activity as a part they are contributing some production as a remuneration or return to that they are gaining some money. 
So, that is a part of GDP because that is coming through some production activity, but transfer payment like beggars income like your pocket money those are not coming through any any production activity. So, that is why it should not be a part of GDP. Okay. So, first, first market value then produced goods and services we told now whatever the produced within that country. Now, uh, second thing is that final production final production. So, if you can remember when we when we told that definition of GDP it is a market value of all amount of goods and services of final production of all amounts of goods and services whatever is produced we whatever is produced this production activity right. Now, final production is coming ok whatever is produced within an economy within a given time point or time interval may be one year or whatever it is ok. Why final production is important? If you do not consider only final production double counting can be there, triple counting can be there, multiple counting can be there in general. How? Suppose I am giving an example. Suppose in an economy you know, in India bread is produced bread ok. So, suppose in this particular year one particular year in India total whatever bread is produced their market value is say uh, 1000 crore rupees suppose. So, bread involved some amount of baked dough. So, bakery you know what they will do. So, bread actually is an output in between so many other productions are there. Wheat is produced by some farmer from using those wheat some flour wheat flowers are produced using those flowers some dough is produced using those dough bread is produced right. So, if you count whatever wheats are produced in that country its market value whatever it is that plus whatever flour is produced in that country its market value plus whatever dough is produced using those flowers its market value plus whatever bread is produced yeah. If you add all those four right what will happen? Wheat is counted four times one CR, one CR, one CR, one CR because to produce flour wheat is essential ingredient. So, similarly to produce dough flour is essential ingredient. So, same product in different it, it is it is changing its shape change and it, it is becoming a new product and ultimately bread is producing. Uh, is produced. So, if we have to calculate the part of GDP, we have to consider only that portion of wheat which is finally used as wheat only. How that is? Say suppose wheat is produced right in, in this country say one, uh, 1 lakh quintal of wheat is produced in a in an year ok. Out of that say 9099 that much quintal of wheat is already used to make flour. So, whatever remaining wheat those those products wheats are used as a final wheat production or final wheat consumption how a lot of cattle are there no. So, um, say hen ok or maybe the cow goat and all the domestic cattle are there right they are essential fodder ok is wheat. Okay, who are who are having poultry and all no they perhaps they are using wheat to feed those uh, uh, domestic animals right. So, so wheat that portion of wheat which is directly used to feed say domestic animals like that or where wheat is used as wheat final consumption of wheat only that portion should be a part of our GDP because the remaining portion of wheat is coming uh, going to somewhere else to produce another product. Okay. So, only that portion of wheat will be as a part of GDP. Then flour, okay, that flour say, say suppose total amount of flour whatever is there say suppose that market value is say suppose 1000 crore rupees. Out of that say suppose 900 crore rupees of flour is already used to make some dough. So, remaining flour how use that flour is used as a final production of flour 
or final consumption of flour. How you can can you remember using that flour? No, gum used to that uh, posters. No, in that uh, advertisement posters. No, handbills and all people used to paste here and there, right? For advertising, you will see that they used to make some gum using that flour. Just boil that flour, that will be gum. And using that gum, they are pasting those handbills, paper handbills to here and there, maybe wall or uh, railway station wall and all those things, right. So, like that, where wheat and that flour is used as a final consumption of flour, only that market value should be a part of separately as a part of your, uh, your GDP in that particular year. So, you can understand why this final production only we are considering exactly Dow whatever the dow is used as a dow as a final consumption that portion of dow only will be there and remaining dow suppose is used to produce either bread or biscuit or something like that cookies okay in a bakery so if we add final production of wheat final production of flour final production of dow final production of bread then you will can be you will you will can uh, you will reach the actual contribution of this chain of production into the gdp okay otherwise if you ho all the wheat's market value all the flowers market value if you add it will be wheat will be counted four times flour will be counted three times dow will be counted two times bread will be counted once so, in that way multiple counting will be there. Okay. So, this is one way you consider only final production. Another way how, how you can avoid only every stages of production you only consider the value addition. So, we are now introducing another new concept called value addition. Okay. So, suppose I, I have a I have a I am I am a I am having a a flour mill. Okay. So, I am purchasing say uh, 100 rupees valuation of wheat from the market and using that 100 rupees of uh, wheat, I am using some, I am producing some flour and that flour I am selling in the market may be 150 rupee. So, you can tell this is this was wheat and here this is flour. So, you can tell at this stages of production, this stage of production 50 rupee value addition is there. Okay. First when wheat production is there 100 rupee value addition was the before wheat nothing was there. Again the person who is uh, the persons who are purchasing this flour from me using that flour okay, they are producing some dow d o u g h dow. So, that valuation total is suppose 250 rupee. So, that that this stages of production dow production actually 250 rupee they are producing or 250 rupees valuation of product they are producing out of that 150 rupee they are they purchase from the market. So, actual value addition is this minus that. So, it is 100 rupees value addition. Okay. This 250 rupees of dow whoever is purchasing they are producing bread and uh, cookies and all those things uh, bread it, it, etc I am telling they are market value suppose 500 rupees. So, definitely this value addition uh, at this stage of production total value addition will be 500 rupees minus 250 rupees. So, 250 rupees. So, total production is GDP of contribution is this 500 or you add this value addition at every layer you will add you will land exactly that 500 rupee look at here 150 then 100 250 and this 250 500 okay so either you go through final production of every layer okay only the concept in this particular loop although four different stages are involved we are considering only final amount of bread Okay. And we are telling that through this process only 500 rupees contribution to GDP and whatever final production of wheat, final production of flour, final production of dow were there those are not entering into this loop. So, those we have to add in over and above this 500 rupees. So, that 500 rupees what I am telling amount of wheat what is produced through this production activities okay, that we can reach through counting only the value addition of every layer of the production we can reach the same number does not matter which way we are going. 
So, double count or multiple count we can avoid only considering the value addition of in every layer of production. Now, you can ask sir how this 50 rupees value addition is coming into the production activity? This is because see when you are I have an uh, flour mill right I am purchasing 100 rupees of wheat. So, I am when I am generating 150 rupees of uh, flour. So, 50 rupees value addition that is coming from where? That is coming through contribution of the labor force perhaps what I am hiring, perhaps the electricity using which I am running my machine and so on. So, do those things you know labor force I am paying something, electricity I am using I have to purchase that from the electricity uh, distribution companies and so on right. So, those contribution are basically 50 rupees. So, value addition is basically contribution of other ingredients including maybe my service whatever I am running that machine. Okay. So, whatever labor force I am utilizing or knowledge I am utilizing there that will be also part. So, those things whatever I am using beyond this wheat as an ingredient whatever different uh, resources I am utilizing to make or convert wheat into flour their con combined valuation is this 50 rupee that is why it is called value addition how much value added at that particular level over the wheat. Okay. In that way we can uh, um, uh, we, we can add all this value addition at different stages of production and we can go we can reach the uh, national income accounting in that way for every kind of production activities whatever is happening within that economy within that particular year. Let us stop here and in the next lecture we will clarify we will continue this discussion. Okay.